So, we will be talking about uh, the micro piles the introduction, how do you classify them, what are the advantages of micro piles and applications and uh, you have a design example. Uh, so, we will see the design procedure as well. Uh, micro piles are nothing but it is just uh, small diameter piles. Uh, the use is that they are very useful in many uh, ground improvement problems and uh, we know we are uh, we know the difference between a big pile and a small pile in the sense that the diameter is quite uh, you know you try to design uh, 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 get a diameter for the load. Here we are trying to replace that uh, bigger diameter with a small number of piles and uh, the micro piles concept came in 1950s in Italy particularly. Uh, when people are trying to develop uh, innovative techniques for underpinning historic structures or monuments uh, which had some sort of damage in the world war II. What happened was that when you have uh, certain buildings and structure and structures which have some sort of inclination or something like that because of some other problems, uh, we know that uh, the existing load carrying capacity is less. So, you would like to improve the load carrying capacity by additional structural uh, means. Uh, so, uh, it may not be easy for you to put another pile foundation. So, the best would be to drive a small micro pile, a couple of micro piles close to the site. So, that whatever is a, a shortfall in the load carrying capacity can be compensated by the micro piles. Uh, at the time, what they felt was that a reliable method to recover to support structure loads with minimal movement and for installation access in restricted environments. What happens is that in many places when you already have a building and it is very it is very difficult to have a big pile installed at the same place because of the access restrictions and the damage that it can cause for the existing facilities and all that. So, what is at the time you know some people did in Italy was that there was a company called Fundidile a particular contractor and uh, there was also another engineer Dr. Lizzie and they felt that use of a small micro piles um, may be simpler than trying to use big pile diameter I mean di diameters of large uh, the piles of large diameter. So, from that time onwards uh, the micro piles have been extensively used and it has been used mainly as elements for foundation support to resist static loading as well as seismic conditions as well as inf in situ reinforcement for slope stability and excavation stability. We will see a number of examples in this case and we know that basically piles are divided into two types one is a displacement pile the other one is a replacement pile. The displacement piles are the members that are driven or vibrated into the ground uh, thereby displacing the surrounding soil laterally during installation. Uh, whereas, replacement piles are placed or constructed in a previously drilled uh, borehole thus replacing the excavated ground. Uh, in fact, you can have micro piles that belong to both categories like either you can uh, have it uh, as a displacement piles or as replacement piles like driven piles or board piles. Only thing is that the diameter is quite small, maybe 100 mm or 150 mm compared to 300 mm is what we have in normal conditions. The advantage is that, say, for example, you are trying to have a uh, tunnel next to the uh, below the foundation, below the foundation of the structure. How do you go about? Because the thing is that you have to make an excavation for the tunnel and it is not easy. So, one way would be that you strengthen the whole system and also excavate in this uh, particular portion <laughs> such that the excavation uh, will not collapse, the excavation for the tunnel will not collapse that is a point here. And uh, the classification is there based on the design application, um, case 1 is micro pile elements when loaded directly there are some cases where the load comes directly on them. So, the pile reinforcement resists the majority of the applied load. Similar to our uh, uh, pile design the total vertical load comes on the pile. So, instead of the pile it comes on the micro pile now and we need to have a small series of small diameter piles that is case 1. The case 2 is that micro pile elements sub circumscribe and internally reinforce the soil to make a reinforced soil composite that resists the applied load. So, in some cases uh, 
one you can have some sort of say suppose this is all a reinforced soil area and uh, you can make that uh, this is in some sense do not lead to instability. So, we will show you some examples how it can be designed both in uh, both as a direct pile element or as a an element that works as a reinforced soil. So, actually uh, the applications are too many and it works as a reinforcement because what happens is that when in, in the case of a slope uh, why the slope failure occurs is because the driving forces are more than the resisting forces. So, we say that the factor of safety is less than 1. So, what we try to do is that we try to put micro piles such that they increase the they decrease the driving forces and increase the resisting forces. So, that is we call it reinforcing the slope that say suppose you put uh, micro piles or piles along the slip surface failure surface the possibility is that the uh, failure surface will not develop earlier there is a failure surface that was occurring, but then once you put this uh, micro piles it will not happen. So, what we do is that we stabilize the slopes using uh, micro piles. So, we call it slope stabilization earth retention and it can be said as uh, ground strengthening and protection settlement reduction. In fact, uh, there is a possibility that there is lot of settlement, but if you introduce this uh, micro piles uh, settlement can be there and structural stability as well. So, that is in the case of a reinforcement in situ reinforcement we call it. Then structural support like you know the uh, for example, structural support is nothing but the load it is like you know you are trying to design the pile for reinforcement and all that and uh, as an earth, earth retention in the sense instead of a conventional retaining wall you can have a micro pile uh, retaining wall. Then foundations for new structures yeah it can be you know it is much cheaper compared to regular piles. Then underpinning of existing structures it is possible. Then seismo seismic retrofitting in fact, uh, this the other day I was mentioning that uh, micro piles were used in uh, one of the dams in uh, Buj like when the Chang dam failed during the Buj earthquake uh, when uh, they did the re reconstruction uh, to increase the liquefaction resistance they used micro piles in the foundation of the dam all along the foundation of the dam the micro piles were used. Then like it can also be used particularly in underpinning of existing structures uh, score protection rep repair and replacement of the existing uh, foundations movement arrest arrest arresting of the movement upgradation of foundation bearing capacity. These are all some of the applications one can think of and uh, as I just mentioned these are all the applications one can think of here like right from new foundations to underpinning of existing structures, seismic retrofitting of existing structures, score protection, earth retention and all that. One of the first applications you know, the way it was uh, uh, schematically shown was that like this is a uh, 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 there is a load coming on this material here then uh, in order to increase the bearing capacity of the foundation here uh, two micro piles were introduced and uh, the advantage was that there is a if the vertical load is coming in this direction there is a skin friction that develops between this uh, uh, grout and the soil and in the opposite direction say for example, there is a vertical load and there is a friction between the soil and the grout and it acts in the opposite direction. So, to some extent some load on the uh, foundation is uh, resisted by the uh, grout uh, interface uh, force and this is an advantage. So, if you know how much of force is to be resisted by the grout mix or the uh, uh, this particular resist uh, the uh, what you call skin skin friction resistance as uh, the friction resistance along this material. So, you can design say for example, you want to make uh, as uh, the the existing load is existing bearing capacity is only 10 ton per meter square you want to make it as 15 ton per meter square. Uh, what can be done is that uh, if you know um, how much is the vertical component of this pile if you just uh, for a for a given length of pile say for example, 6 or 7 meters you know it is um, length and skin friction uh, along this length and you resolve that into the vertical direction of this particular pile and uh, as many number of piles you can have to see that that extra load is taken care of by this uh, system. 
So, that is a simple uh, way of doing that we have done some case study on that as well. Uh, this is another example like you have an existing masonry reinforced uh, by reticulated piles like you know these are all the existing uh, one can have uh, if you find that a particular building is there is a tendency for crack then the possibility is that okay then in order to see that uh, further damage is not there you put some sort of micro piles here which is quite useful. Uh, this is another important difference that uh, I think I should highlight to you is that uh, micro piles can take vertical loads as well as lateral loads. Okay. So, normally we use particularly in years uh, we call them as drill shafts the big di diameter say for example, it can be 2 meters or 1 meter uh, we call it a drill shaft. Okay. So, uh, this is actually designed for the pile soil interaction here. So, for example, the basis of this uh, design is that the uh, pile soil interaction here and uh, uh, this is a compressible strata. Okay, this is a, uh, a reasonably good strata, bearing strata, what you call. So, instead of this big diameter pile, what you're doing is that you have a short diameter piles like this, and uh, the bearing resistance or the shaft resistance, uh, because of this uh, small diameter, is sometimes equal or more than this what you get from here, which means that this is this is going to be easier, much simpler. Even the same thing could be done for lateral piles also, lateral loaded, lateral loaded capacity of the piles we know how to calculate and uh, instead of this pile which has a lateral resistance like this, you can see that there is only a, some sort of lateral resistance here, but if you have micro piles you can have lateral resistance like this. So, to sustain axial loads as well as to sustain uh, lateral forces this is very effective. The other application that I want to show you is that this is a slope, slope failure can occur like this, this is a failure surface that you have and uh, this is a stable soil, this is a moving soil and uh, you have a, a pile and uh, why pile is introduced is because if you have a see the thing is what is happening this is a driving force this is a bottom one resisting force is in the opposite direction. So, the driving force uh, divided by resisting force is an inverse of factor of safety or it from the force uh, equilibrium considerations you calculate the resistance divided by uh, the driving force is nothing but the factor of safety and um, it can you have to calculate a in terms of the moments, in terms of the force horizontal forces, in terms of the vertical forces and all that you have to meet all that equilibrium uh, equations uh, considerations and calculate factor of safety. And if you know we know that the soil is poor in shear resistance and now you have a concrete column here under even a steel reinforcement they can be very good in resisting shear. So, you have got this uh, diameter of the pile such that this provides earlier the factor of safety is less than 1. Now, you have a micro pile bigger diameter pile and uh, if you are able to properly design it you can this shaft is sufficient to take care of the uh, slope. But uh, the, as I just mentioned instead of this shaft, one can even have simple micro piles like this. This is uh, what I said you know it is called directly loaded materials like you know where the case 1 micro pile this materials are loaded directly and then you get the advantage. You can see that Yeah, here you are trying to design it for the vertical uh, component here. You can just see that you can uh, see a line here where uh, you have a force here. The same force is now replaced with this uh, micro piles. You know, shaft resistance is there. The same shaft resistance you are able to get from here. You know, the thing is that here, what I just mentioned, case one is an example where load is directly taken care of by the micro piles, vertical load. Here, same thing but shear is something different that is a case 2. So, vertical load is taken care of by this system right. Yeah. Case 2 is another example of a reticulated pile network with reinforced soil mass loaded or engaged. So, essentially like imagine that this is a very old building where you know the possibility is that 
uh, we find lot of cracks in the building and then you calculate and then find that uh, this is cracks is because of the differential settlement. When you know that the cracks are is uh, because of the differential settlement, you have to see that the strength of the soil in that place is increased and uh, you have to reinforce that. So, you do that and they are useful in this direction. Even so, what, what happens is that they create a composite block, you know, say for example, the center of gravity of the structure you can calculate, resultant uh, things also you can calculate. Uh, to lower the center of gravity of the soil structure in unit to improve stability is done and this is another example of uh, trying to have a uh, strong here, you know, this for a slope uh, failure here and um, you have a strong soil here, somewhat weak bedrock here, then uh, uh, this uh, typical soil. So, one can have this sort of micropel here as well. Uh, case 1 micro pile where the load directly can come like you know new micro pile foundation support this can be there in this this is a bridge abutment this is a slope uh, then this another one approximate failure surface could be failure plane could be like this. Now, uh, reinforced con uh, yeah concrete cap is here finished grade is that okay road surface. So, all that load you know the advantage is that you do not you have constructed here you do not want this uh, slide to take place. So, you you are trying to provide some sort of resistance in this manner. This is another classical example how you know uh, instead of uh, having a big retaining wall you can have a number of piles which are easy to install and then it can take care of the surcharge as well as air pressure all facing is you know it is a very minimum wall facing here, thin facing is there. What we did was that we are trying to put lot of reinforcement elements in this vertical direction and uh, that can act as a uh, very good uh, retention system instead of the regular retaining wall. So, this is based on the design, uh, then we have based on the construction type. Uh, the method of grouting is generally very sensitive to the construction control and uh, the grout the ground bond capacity should be very good and uh, the grout to grout the whatever the capacity resistance depends on the grouting method. So, you can have a gravity grout where the uh, grout you know grout is cement uh, mix cement plus sand mix like you have a cement 1 is to 4 you know that could be the grout mix water content could be little high. So, that uh, it has a flowable properties and you can have a pressure through casing then single global post grout multiple repeatable post grout you will see that what is this grouting. What you are trying to do here is that we are trying to create this columns of grout. So, here the grout type A is grout is called you uh, know uh, it is a type A here the it is placed under the gravity head only using sand cement mortars or need cement ok. Type B is uh, in this type we have some sort of pressure like you know we try to remove the casing also and then put some sort of pressure. So, that uh, uh, you know the pressure is also controlled so that it does not break the existing rock. Type C is uh, this and type D is what we will see. Type C is nothing but again it is just a gravity type and in fact what happens is that um, you try to have uh, what you call uh, you know at every stage it gets hardened and uh, prior to hardening of the primary grout similar grout is injected one time via a sleek grout pipe at a pressure of at least 1 MPa. D type this is done in two step process of grouting similar to type C with modifications to step 2 where the pressure is injected at a pressure of 2 to 8 MPa. What we do is that little higher pressure is there and then it is somewhat it, it has this sort of uh, structure where uh, it is called uh, type C single global post grout type D multiple repeat, uh, repeated post grout. So, essentially what you are trying to do is that you try to create some sort of a structure where um, the bond resistance come into picture. The advantages of the micro piles are that they are often used to uh, underpin the existing structures where need of minimal vibrational noise is of prime importance. 
say for example, if you want to construct uh, any other uh, ground improvement technique in an existing town area where you know things are very uh, difficult like say for example, any other technique if you want to use it is not easy. The existing structure you would like to stabilize. So, micro pile is one of the best ones. In fact, soil nailing is another one that I will show you later and uh, but micro pile uh, is, an, uh, is a very good technique. Micro piles can be easily laid when low headroom is a constraint like you know when there is not much place to move around and uh, place equipment micro piles can be easily done. Micro piles can be easily installed at any angle below the horizontal using the same equipment used for ground anchors and grouting projects. In fact, the equipment is not very different from uh, what we have in the case of uh, grouting projects or uh, ground anchor projects where extensive uh, uh, grouting is done. So, the same equipment can be used to install micro piles you know the micro piles are nothing but grouted columns. So, definitely uh, you one can use this. They are they offer a very practical and cost effective solution to costly alternative pile systems as well as a solution to job sites with uh, difficult access. This is another one and then they have they do not require uh, larger platforms, drilling platforms and all that. So, how do you do that? Of course, there are different ways like I will show you. Uh, begin drilling or installation of the temporary casing like you know you have a temporary casing also sometimes outside. So, that it should not collapse right. Casing is required when you are trying to make a borehole to see that the borehole do does not collapse. So, come you go, go to the required depth then remove the inner drill bit on the rod required. So, remove the drill bit like we have seen couple of techniques where use a drill bit also uh, to uh, go to a particular depth. So, what we do is that remove that then place the grout place a reinforcement and grout by trimming. So, you put some reinforcement rod and put grout. So, this becomes the micro pile. So, remove temporary casing sometimes if you want you can even improve the see this is a temporary casing is there you remove the temporary casing inject further grout under pressure as applicable like you can even keep on removing this or if you want to return it also is fine. So, you can uh, in fact the advantage here you can see that you have a bigger uh, pressure bulb uh, I mean uh, pressure grouted area and that could increase the bearing capacity of the uh, pile foundation here. So, then after that you put a my cap that is what we do here. So, there are some certain design steps that we should do you have a review of available project information have a geotechnical data information, geotechnical design, pile structural design also combined geotechnical structural design considerations additional micro uh, pile system considerations. Actually we have to see there are two issues that I was just mentioning one is you try to design the pile as a micro pile as a um, uh, pile that is one case taking it as a structural member. The second case is uh, try to design it as a reinforcement the two examples uh, the critical uh, distinctions here. Now, I will be talking about determination of uh, the pile as a micro pile similar to what we use in the case of piles. Here what is important is that because of the grout we have axial load carrying capacity we is obtained and uh, because you are putting a column of uh, grout uh, what is the load allowable on the grout is how do you get it is nothing but the um, the alpha is nothing but the bond strength into the uh, pi, pi it is actually essentially the uh, diameter and it is the friction and then the length of the micro pile ok. We assume that wherever is the length that uh, no whatever wherever you have putting the grout that length we take and then suitable factor of safety we apply is essentially nothing but it is uh, uh, the uh, uh, surface friction that gets mobilized between the pile and the soil ok. So, uh, ground to ground bond capacity of the pile you can get this and uh, this is what I can see. Say for example, if you are trying to use a type A, type B, type C, type D depending on the type of soil you have uh, these materials and uh, once you know that 
see that is, that is called a skin friction essentially what you got was a skin friction then you can also get the end bearing also and uh, you know end bearing is like similar to driven piles one can get or even load testers one can do and then once you get the ultimate load by, by factor of safety you will get that uh, uh, the other one also like the axial capacitor the micro pile. So, uh, normally we try to put them in the form of a group of piles and um, for driven piles no individual capacity reduction for group considerations with the exception of friction piles and cohesive soils. Actually we try to use some sort of you know when uh, the to consider group action uh, we try to use a, an efficiency factor of 0.7 we uh, do not assume that it is fully 1 we use an efficiency factor 0.7 similar to pile design and uh, with the center distance spacing of less than 3 meters of the pile diameter. Essentially um, when they are too close we take this reduction otherwise it is not ne necessary like sometimes uh, no it is similar to a pile design we try to make uh, this uh, group efficiency correction also. So, that is from geotechnical considerations where you try to get the uh, shaft resistance as well as the bearing resistance based on uh, pile soil interaction and all that it is a uh, some um, uh, some design procedures we have and uh, in the case of structural design what we do is that we have to normally we also do in the pile design that we calculate the structural capacity of the pile. Structural capacity of the pile is calculated, geotechnical capacity of the pile is calculated and uh, whichever governs the design you uh, take it, we take it appropriately. So, we have to ensure that th there is a enough uh, friction available and also the structural capacity is also calculated and how do you calculate the structural capacity like say for example, um, in, in the case uh, if you have a casing here okay, as a micro in the for, for the main, main uh, say member here and um, what we do is that we assume that the yield stress what is the yield stress. So, we assume that some sort of uh, strain compatibility between the casing and bar and the yield stress of the st uh, steel is taken as F i st steel is minimum of F i bar and F i casing. There are two members here one is the uh, steel yield capacity like as I just mentioned at the center of the micro pile we have one uh, rod and then casing is also there whichever is the minimum of them you take say for example, uh, you may have uh, mild steel as a uh, casing and you may have a ribbed T star as a reinforcement like you know which has a uh, uh, that uh, say for example, 250 MPa will be the cover and uh, 415 MPa will be the central rod. So, whichever is minimum we take for uh, calculations. So, this are all known and uh, what is that tensile load that can be uh, allowed you have this sort of uh, a simple expression also what is a uh, load you know the thing is the micro piles can also be designed for taking tension and compression and all that you know lateral forces and uh, as because. So, in this case uh, since a pile is subjected to lateral force for example, you have all these uh, um, forces developed. So, you must be able to check here we try to take like similar to 0.55 similar to a factor of safety of uh, half or some uh, 1 point I mean 2 factor of safety of 2 or little more than that or little less than that then you will get 0.55 Fi steel into A bar area of uh, cross section of the bar central plus the casing. So, that is in the case of tension and in the case of compression we have uh, uh, 0.4 into the C grout into area of the grout plus 0.47 F y into steel into like uh, area of the bar plus area of the casing. So, we are trying to divide on the compressive, uh, compressive load that one can take from the this thing is that this is a uh, simple expression this is an expression for a tensile capacity uh, that allowable because you are using a term called uh, 0.55 here and this also we in the case of compression we have factors like 0.4 and 0.47 and the corresponding areas of grout are there here. In the case of grout you have this and in the case of steel material you have this. So, total compression you know because the micro pile consists of both uh, central rod casing and the grout. So, for all the three things you should have. So, once you have this sort of information and what you do is that 
yeah even for uncased also one can get uh, some sort of uh, uh, expressions like this uh, you know casing and there are two types one is case type the other one is non case type without casing or whatever so without casing also one can do that with the simple calculations like uh, skin friction is the basis and uh, say for example that is what we have done here bond strength and we use tensile allowable also we use in the same thing except that i removed casing here nothing else and the compression allowable load again the casing is not there so, you the same expressions are used and same concepts are used to get the allowable loads on the micro pile based on geotechnical considerations as well as structural considerations. So, sometimes um, when you are trying to design for earthquake conditions, it is necessary to find out what is the deflection that it can go undergo. So, for a micro pile you know this is a displacement that it can undergo like you know the simple uh, strength of materials formula where uh, you have this expression. So, it is simple to calculate because we assume that the loads are all elastic loads are within elastic range. I will try to give a small example design micro piles for an embankment with a top width of 4 meters width and uh, 2 meters high with 1 is to slide on the sides with a unit weight of embankment fill of 17 kilonewton on soft soil to improve the bearing capacity in a uniform deposit of medium clay with unconfined compression strength of 100 kilonewton per meter square. Consider the diameter of micro pile as 0.1 with a minimum spacing of 3 times center to center. So, what you are trying to do is that you are trying to construct an embankment in a soft soil reasonably soft like you know I just said there is unconfined compression strength is uh, about 100 which is not uh, it is reasonably good. What we do is that we try to calculate uh, it is uh, uh, first thing is a single pile skin resistance. So, you know the shear strength 100. So, you want uh, you know the unconfined compressive strength. So, C u will be half of the shear strength. So, 50 k p a. So, point load capacity of the single pile is nothing but C u into n c into a p. So, you will get this number and then skin friction resistance of the pile alpha C u into A s where A s is the length of the uh, pile actually 10 meters is what I have taken in this case. And uh, so, I am just taking pi d not pi d square by 4 into L I am just taking d diameter as the this thing that is why you get here you know for simplicity normally people we have two types of uh, considering here either pi d square by 4 um, into L are just pi d l. So, normally for pi d l is used here in some uh, simple approximations particularly when it comes to skin friction. Then you calculate both uh, the loads 3.4 you can see that skin friction of the single pile is much bigger. Had it been a normal pile this is somewhat higher say for example, if the diameter is going to be higher like you know diameter directly comes here like AP, AP is the area of the pile right. It comes here then uh, this will dominate, but here you can see that the pipe uh, the pile diameter is smaller and you have this one dominates the thing. So, what I want to say highlight to you is that here that if you have small micro piles which are easy to install they can take care of the uh, carrying capacity of the bigger pile itself and the advantage is that it is very fast, it is convenient, it is uh, um, quite easy to do the things. So, once you have the total load uh, of the single you know we are trying to calculate the single uh, pile capacity say for example, 145 kilonewtons. Then assume that the total load you know, like you know the embankment is about 4 meters width and then one it has a 1 is to 2 slope. So, it has that uh, uh, 4 meters if and then unit weight is this much and surcharge is this uh, total load. So, I calculate and 284 kilo Newton will be the load per meter length of the embankment that is what we get. Actually, I am not using any load distribution factor here I am just assuming 20 kp as working on that and then it has a side slope. I am just calculating the what is the total load that is coming on the base of the uh, uh, embankment. Uh, so, for example, as is just said the height of the embankment is 4 meters. So, below 4 meters I will get this much stress and I am not assuming any stress distribution and I am taking total load as it is. So, uh, definitely uh, this is the load and ultimate capacity of the pile group of 3 piles which are spaced at 0.3 you know uh, say when I said 1, 145, 145 into 3 is 435. 
and um, so 435 divided by 284 factor of safety is 1.53. Hence, the configuration of micro piles with above ultimate capacity is ap appropriate. So, this is what a simple statement that one can make. And now, I look at uh, it is uh, structural capacity also because uh, thing is that structural capacity should be you know more than the geotechnical capacity because it should more work as a pile micro pile you know. So, you we can use uh, 120 uh, diameter outside you know OD and uh, in, you have a steel pipes or some uh, simple casing and you, you have all this uh, um, steel diameter area calculated and all that. And we know the yield strength of this material like as I just said yield strength of the casing is 1 like 240 k MPA it should be and um, uh, you reinforcement bar of 415 MPA and 25 mm diameter compressive strength we know strain compatibility to we have seen this formula and uh, 240 is the minimum I had taken. And uh, normal allowable tensile strength can be determined using this equation this uh, also is the, tens, uh, the maximum load. Then compression allowable also one can calculate ok. You can see that um, the allowable tensile force is uh, tensile load is 520 and then allowable compressive load is 530 and you can see that um, the allowable geotechnical uh, capacity like you know the depending on the type of material it is about 190 kPa and uh, once you use this uh, the what is the total load available um, you, you can calculate using its bond strength and the length you know 10 meters is the length I get 238. So, 238 kilo newtons is quite good compared to 530 you know. So, uh, and then we also had a calculation about the number of uh, piles uh, calculations based on some you know load and all that how many number of piles are required and based on the properties of that soil and uh, other things. So, you are able to get some idea that yeah micro piles a system can be designed uh, and uh, it should be such that it should uh, uh, have proper spacing and diameter to take care of the load right and also that it should uh, comply with the geotechnical capacities as well as structural capacities and once they are satisfactory one can go ahead with design. I mean uh, implementation in the sense that there is again some more things in the implementation once you have the designed uh, uh, some uh, uh, micro pile diameter uh, it is important that you have uh, some more analysis then I will show you another example in the case of uh, which uh, this is what you saw was in the case of uh, structural capacity Mi micro pile uh, has that uh, advantage that it is working more as a uh, structural member. Now, I will show you some example like uh, where it is required that uh, it works it uh, acts as uh, the shear uh, shear for shear uh, capacity. In fact, this is an example of an uh, uh, for a uh, railway project uh, there is a, a, a particular uh, big tunnel or an under under uh, the underpass box was coming here and then there is a surcharge load is applied and uh, they wanted to see um, without uh, they wanted to see what is the stability of this members and then you have a uh, system here and then there is a train track here like railways are also going up at the top. So, they wanted to see that this particular uh, area is not uh, is to be stabilized in uh, using some technique and what I did was that I did some sort of analysis and I find that without any reinforcement uh, this slope is not stable and uh, uh, this is a type of uh, uh, micro pile uh, resistance you know the shear failure occurs like that, but if you have micro pile uh, this can ap apply some sort of force and uh, this is how you know the micro piles act the force will act here. And uh, so, what I did was that I took uh, uh, micro piles of uh, like they are made of uh, steel pipes of 120 diameter with 6 mm thickness and uh, use them as micro piles. So, the uh, actually you if you go to tables we know what is the shear strength of uh, steel also like you know shear strength of uh, I mean uh, steel is very good in uh, tension right, but it can also be used as a 
um, shear member because you know when compared to soil its shear resistance is much higher like it cannot be sheared easily. So, what is its capacity if you just look at the books it shows that if you know that it is uh, yield strength it is 0.4 Fy right. So, 0.4 Fy into AS. So, you have that area of uh, uh, this thing and all that calculations 224.2 kilo Newtons was the shear resistance from single pile. So, the horizontal component of the shear resistance provides resistance uh, for induced shear forces due to excavating and loading. So, there is some the moment you start excavating there is a tendency to fall and also there is a load that is going because of the traffic. So, what uh, I suggested was that you should have two rows of uh, micro piles and the length the diameter everything is known diameter and then uh, I will just show you and then when I just made the calculations uh, it has a factor of safety of uh, 1.836 compared to 0 0.2 earlier like this is the type of uh, diagram that you get like you know in the early previous case the shear force was about you know it can you have a number of uh, shear uh, failures that could occur this is a load that we have and this is a uh, about 10 meters actually and uh, this is the way that it should happen and then the fact of safety is quite good. So, what I want to say is that the uh, one should really understand that micro piles should be designed both for uh, can be designed both for its structural capacity in uh, as a uh, compression member as well as a tension member and it can also be designed for shear capacity depending on the situation. Uh, this is another example that I want to highlight to you uh, where uh, say for example, this is in uh, place in Malayshuram where uh, you have buildings on all the three sides and the depth of uh, uh, the excavation is about uh, 7 meters and uh, the thing is that it is not easy to you know uh, it is actually a very old uh, um, so they have removed that area and then they want to make uh, you know uh, this sort of construction. So, it is very difficult to uh, construct a retaining wall to see that the buildings are uh, the above the you know you cannot do that. So, the thing is that before you start any even excavation you should do the micro piles first then remove the soil. The operation is that like you can as I just showed you in the example in the previous example uh, you know you design the micro piles for certain shear load like say for example, the these micro piles will take care of the shear load that comes from this building like say for example, the weight is not much, but the load that exists because of the uh, uh, apartment next to that will cause lot of uh, shear force and the shear force has to be resisted by the shear resistance of the uh, at the micro piles at the interface. So, what was done was that um, the uh, first thing the way it should be done was put, put micro piles first then excavate later because uh, the moment you uh, do the if you do anything further without stabilizing it leads to lot of problems you know even if you excavate a bit of say for example, 2 meters also it could lead to collapse. So, first step would be to put all that in the surrounding area you know suppose it is about 50 by 80 site you know 50 feet by 80 feet site completely put this sort of micro piles all round and uh, also this is uh, actually you know if there is a uh, for ga gas removal and all that. So, you can see that the uh, it is very uh, they went about 10 meters actually a closed view look you can see here that uh, this is the pile and this is the reinforcement instead of one rod what I just mentioned it can have 3 rods. Uh, it all depends on the shear capacity. Um, then you can have another close look. You can see that the way it is not uh, say water table is there. Say what when you have water table also it is not easy to do say for example, it can collapse you know if particularly when there is a water table at the uh, bottom of the foundation uh, the possibility is that it can collapse right. So, they have you can see all the micro piles which have uh, about 1, 2, 3, 4 members and then they provide enough shear resistance. In fact, uh, I have I have uh, I have been solving another case uh, similar to this in the north east where um, 
it is a slope of about uh, 50, 10 meters and uh, you have a train track like this and uh, you know you are trying to stabilize the slope next to that. And uh, we have come out with a design system where they have already have a fixed pipes there is a particular size uh, diameter they want to use and uh, they want to have a combination of whatever see it is in some places they will have only a uh, constraints on the sizes and con constraints on the diameters. So, you should come out with uh, a proper combinations of uh, uh, sh the materials like you know the this is a steel casing this is a central reinforcement rod and this is a grout you know in fact you, know, you can see that if you are able to design properly this grout makes one can get very good uh, capacities uh, for uh, shear resistance. Then uh, that way one can get uh, very good improvement here and uh, so similar case was also done in the case of uh, uh, a project in railways in uh, north east. Uh, what I would like to say is that micro piles is a very versatile in situ ground improvement technique and it has been used very well in many st uh, stability problems whether it is uh, in terms of the increase in bearing capacity or in terms of the um, uh, shear resistance additional shear resistance. I wish to mention another case study where uh, uh, in Mysore you know the bearing in particularly in one of the places they wanted to construct a, a, a a marriage hall and uh, the they went ahead with the construction, but then they found uh, some sort of distress the mo even during the construction for the simple foundations. Then when they did the SPT test uh, the bearing capacity uh, earlier they have taken 20 ton per meter square as the bearing capacity and went ahead with design, but then the investigation showed that the bearing capacity was only 7 ton per meter square. So, they have to make it up to see that it is 20 ton per meter square is exist is the available otherwise they cannot go ahead with construction actually that is actually a little bit of loose uh, dumped material and uh, normally the tendency uh, is that uh, if you um, the you need to calculate the, if you want to calculate the foundation sizes you must assume some bearing capacity and come out with the widths of the foundation and other things area of the foundation that uh, can distribute the load but if the load bearing capacity is going to be low then you need larger areas. So, what they did was uh, to avoid this operation uh, in fact, we calculated what is the number of um, micro piles required to um, give this uh, bearing capacity extra additional bearing capacity which was required earlier what is required was 20 ton per meter square what is available was 7 ton per meter square. So, the 13 ton per meter square uh, the load was in fact, uh, supplied by micro piles skin friction. So, uh, we know that for, for 1 meter square area you need um, 13 ton tons 1 meter square area you need 13 tons of skin friction. So, that we you we know that so we use that information to get the length and the diameter. So, we know this uh, basic uh, formula now we have seen that how it can be obtained like you know you, you know the skin friction of the pile and the soil and uh, you know the pi d you use the pi d and the length and uh, uh, then once uh, then some loads you can assume what are taking it as vertical. Uh, see if you are putting the pile as vertical is one thing it is fine you know if you are putting inclined you have to take a normal component of that and uh, once you do that then it can be solved. So, essentially what you are looking at is calculate the number of piles that uh, that are required ok. So, uh, as I just mentioned it has been very effective in many ground improvement uh, problems and uh, the thing is that we assume something here like you know the thing is I assume some uh, numbers here to calculate the uh, uh, to calculate in uh, to uh, what should be the micro pile capacity. Say for example, uh, you may design the piles using these uh, standard practice, but best is to do the testing uh, lateral load test or a vertical load test. Vertical load test or a uh, lateral load test one can do using uh, the same testing like you know we know how to do a, a pile load test. So, we do a pile load test and uh, see whatever you have you can calculate both the skin friction shaft uh, friction and all that 
and once you know that yes for this length of pile this is correct then you can even modify the design. Uh, the same thing with uh, lateral capacities also in fact uh, in the particular case that I just mentioned in the case of uh, uh, northeast uh, the lateral force required was quite high uh, because of the requirement that you know it should be designed for even the earthquake conditions like you know when you design for earthquake conditions the uh, lateral force resisted will be higher and uh, so once you have so you must be able to design for the lateral force also so if you are you may design but then you should check so what i suggested them was that um, they should just uh, anchor the, the do a proper uh, um, uh, the lateral load test so for example one can do lateral load test for 10 meters 15 meters or 20 meters three piles one can install and then calculate what is the actual load capacity lateral load capacity of the each pile and whichever is really giving the result you know because um, so as you just you have seen some assumptions in the theory uh, that like you know the bond capacity and all that it is very uh, uh, there are rough estimates. So, it is better to just properly get the numbers from the field and uh, take that number and then once say for example, I assume a length say for example, in the particular case they have taken uh, cohesion is uh, about uh, low value of 10 kp and friction is also quite low 17 or 18 degrees which is quite low and once you have low values of cohesion friction the lateral force is going to be very high. So, I had a doubt that uh, it may not be appropriate without uh, going for a, a complete plate load test lateral load test. So, I suggested that I, though I was able to give the design based on the design parameters that they have given uh, it is better that we check the actual uh, um, correct load carrying capacity by using lateral load tests which are again available in IS code. So, they are planning to do that. And the fact is that once you have which length will give the correct load carrying capacity once I get for a couple of piles then I can use that as a design basis and complete scheme could be given to see that that uh, uh, slope is stabilized under that earthquake uh, force and even it, it serves as a permanent uh, slope stabilization measure. So, me measurement of this lateral load capacities and vertical load capacity is very important and uh, they are required in the validation of the design configuration and sometimes you may have to redesign the structures. So, we have a lot of information on this uh, micro piles particularly the very good guidelines on the uh, US department of transportation has given uh, which has been a very useful uh, compilation of all the design methods, uh, construction methods, the load testing and all that and there is a good body of information available on this. So, actually the as I just mentioned the advantage of this uh, thing was that it is uh, acting as a densifying material like you know a system as well as like it can also give a reinforcement also. So, um, it is a very good uh, uh, method for ground improvement. Thank you.